So I'm just going to go over how I create a laser cut design within Fusion 360. Um, I'm going to be doing a finger jointed tabbed laser cut box, um, just a five sided box. So first thing to do, I like to turn on my origin, um, see that, and we will create a new component. So let's new component. And we'll just name this component um, base. And it's activated, and we'll create a sketch on the bottom plane. So this plane right here. And we'll do R for rectangle. Go out here. Let's do 50 millimeters by 100. And then we'll stop sketch, press pull. Three. Okay, so there's our base. Before we go any further, let's create some parameters. With, what did we say? We did 100. Depth, depth. We did fifty, and then we'll do a height of forty, and then our material thickness is three millimeters. change up some of our sketch diameters. So dimension one, so we'll put here instead, we'll do width. And then here we'll do depth. And then in the extrude, we're doing thickness. Okay, so that means I made those changes so that if we want to change the size um, or adjust some of the parameters later, uh, we can just go in and change those. Um, we can just change the parameters there instead of having to go back and re-edit all of the sketches. So now here we have three sides. Um, we have the bottom, the front, and then the side. Can just go home. I'm going to create a pattern, a rectangular pattern. Um, I'm going to make a pattern of bodies. This body, the direction. It's going to be in this direction. Um, I'm just do spacing in between. The quantity is going to be two bodies at the end, and the distance is going to be depth minus thickness. And I need to adjust that slightly so it's minus okay and that will create a copy of that front body at the back edge and now here in the front I should see two bodies body one and body two okay and then I'll do the same for the sides there, that creates the other body right over there. And then if I turn on the front and backs, now you'll see that I have yeah, well this whole thing so we can see the components. So I have these overlapping areas here in the corners where the two the bodies from the sides and the front and back.
intersect. Now let's go in and we will create our finger joints. The easiest way that I have found to do this is to um, well, let's just go in here and do this. We'll activate the front and we'll go into our sketch and we'll edit our sketch. So now we want to create the tabs on the front. Let's do a line. Let's just do it here to here. Do parallel between here and here. And we'll dimension this distance from here to the edge. We want this to be thickness. And we'll do the same over on this side. Here. So now we have our lines this way, and then what we will do is create a line right from there to there, dimension from this point down to this point as um, height divided by 6. And then we will create a pattern, rectangular pattern, this line, the direction is going to be in this direction, and we want, um, we want five tabs total, so that means we will be doing four lines, so we want four segments total, and the distance, actually we want spacing between them to be height divided by 6. And we want this in the negative direction. I think we want this to be 5 instead. And then here we'll need to edit this. I think I re did this incorrectly. This should be five as well. And then we'll do the same over on this side. Now we want to edit this and create a similar uh, tabs down here. So the same thing. We'll just create a line from here to here. So we can stop our sketch now, and if we edit our previous extrude, the edit feature, so now there are 20 selected, and so we can just unselect all of those, and then we can go through our sketch and select the ones that we would like. that we want. Those are all the portions of our body we want in this or the front face. So you can see we're creating our finger joint here. If we click OK, now the body instead of being this full rectangular shape here is going to be this kind of toothed body. Do OK. And then since we have it patterned out, the rear is automatically the same. Here. So the only place left that we need to add in finger joints now is on is between the side and the base. So let's edit our side. There's our body there. Now, 
this just has the teeth on the bottom. You can see this body does not have the uh, finger joints on the sides, and the base doesn't have any any of them. Um, if we were to simply look at our base, the base is still a solid, a solid piece. So now the way that I create the finger joints to create the profiles is activate the whole the whole uh, box and bring all of these out and then I simply do a modify combine kind of weird that it's combined, but the target body is going to be the base, and then my tool bodies will be all of our side entities here, and the operation I want to do is a cut, and I want to keep the tools. So that will keep my front and back, and it will and the sides, but it will just take away all the places where they um, intersect. And if I do OK, uh, so now you can see here the base just comes out. Um, so if I hide my side in front, you can see now the now the base has the matching notches for the finger joint to cut on the laser cutter. So in a similar way, the side body here needs to be cut from needs to have the cuts made so that it uh, interfaces with the front and back so we do another make sure our top level component is activated and we do another modify combine so there we have a finger jointed box. So you can see here that they don't enter this face here, and this face here. So the way that I check to make sure that I have all of my cuts in, done in the proper way, you can kind of see the shape here as I highlight um, for each for each face is to just do inspect and then in interference um, so I can just do a yeah, so I've selected all bodies and compute and there should be no interferences detected so that means that there's no overlapping um, so all of my faces are coincident and um, if I did forget to do a cut or if one of these um, sides you know didn't interact or intersect properly there would be interference um, where the two bodies uh, collided and it would show you here so you can go back and find the body and fix it So there is my little box. Um, and now to do the export for laser cutting, I would simply go into my top level, and I would create a sketch. And I would just select the plane that I want to do. So I start the sketch there, and then you can just simply stop sketch see up in my top level sketches that my sketch is just the face of that body. I can name this front back. Um, go up here and I'll create another sketch on a side face. And then I can stop sketch. You can see that that sketch is just the that face of that body. And this is the sides. And I need to do
do one more sketch for the bottom. Now you can see highlighted that that's the, the sketch. Rename that bottom. So what I would typically do here to finish and create this box would be go through each of these sketches for the planar faces then just do save as DXF and then run it through my normal laser cutter uh, cam process. I hope this was helpful. Um, this is how I do uh, design in Fusion 360 for laser cut objects. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is the way that I found um, that will create the files that um, I can send to my laser cutter uh, for arbitrary designs. If you have any comments or suggestions or easier ways to do this, or if I just totally did something in a uh, in a roundabout way, if there's a better tool in Fusion 360, I would love to hear about it.